Shilakon founder Acharya Shila Prabhupada ki, the most merciful, Patita Pavan, <coughs> savior of the whole world, Shila Prabhupada ki, Ananda Koti Vaishnavrind ki. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Shishi Guru and Goranga. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavat, Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text Number 21. Narayanam <coughs> Naram Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayamudiraye Before reciting this <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one shall offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, Narayan, <coughs> unto non Narayan Rishu, the supermost human being, and unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyas Dev, the author. Nasprae su abadre su Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavate Uttam Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtaki By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart is completely <coughs> destroyed and loving service. Onto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Pita Brata Surat Putra Hataste Vigatam Vayam Atma Chajaraya Grasta Paragaham Upasase Pita Brata Surat Putra Hataste Vigatam Vayam Atma Chajaraya Grasta Paragaham Upasase Pitta Brata Surat Putra Hataste Vigatam Vayam Atma Chajaraya Grasta Paragaham Upasase Please recite. Pitta Brata Putra
Krista. Peter, father, brother, brother, surat, well-wishers, putra, sons, hatha, all dead, te, yours, vigitam, expanded, vayam, age, atma, the body, cha, also, jaraya, Invalidity, Kras, Grasta, Overcome, Param Geham, Another's Home, Upasase, You Do Live. Translation purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan, Swami Shala Prabhupada Ki. <coughs> Your father, brother, well wishes and sons are all dead and passed away. You yourself have expanded the major portion of your life. Your body is now overtaken by invalidity and you are living in the home of another. Please repeat. Your father, brother, well-wishers and sons are all dead and passed away. You yourself have expanded the major portion of your life. Your body is now overtaken by invalidity and you are living in the home of another. Purport. The king is reminded of his precarious condition. Influenced by cruel time and by his past experience, he should have been more intelligent to see what was going to happen in his own life. His father, Vichitravirya, died long ago when he and his younger brothers were all little children. And it was due to the care and kindness of Bhishma Dev that they were properly brought up. Then again his brother Pandu died also. Then in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, his 100 sons and his grandsons all died, along with all other well-wishers like Bhishma Dev, Dronacharya, Karna and many other kings and friends. So he had lost all man and money and now he was living at the mercy of his nephew, whom he had put into troubles of various types. And despite all these reverses, he thought that he would prolong his life more and more. Vidura wanted to point out to Dhritarashtra that everyone has to protect himself by his action and the grace of the Lord. One has to execute his duty faithfully, depending for the result on the supreme authority. No friend, no children, no father, no brother, no state and no one else can protect a person who is not protected by the supreme Lord. I like to repeat that again. One has to execute his duty faithfully, depending for the result on the supreme authority. No friend, no children, no father, no brother, no state, and no one else can protect a person who is not protected by the Supreme Lord. One should therefore seek the protection of the Supreme Lord for the human form of life is meant for seeking that protection. He was warned of his precarious conditions more and more by the following words. Oma Gyanam Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Salakya Chakshun Unmilitam Yena Tasmei Shri Guruve Namah I was born in the darkest <coughs> ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. <coughs> Please accept my humble obeisances at the dust of your lotus feet. I offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, the deliverer of the fallen souls. By his mercy, a dumb man like me can turn into an Alagun speaker. And he also enables the lame to cross over mountains. Without the shelter, the whole world is wandering in an ocean of ignorance. Before I start speaking today, I would like to seek the <coughs> blessings of all the senior Vaishnavas, Prabhupada disciples, who are sitting here, to be able to speak something <coughs> on the science of Krishna consciousness, imparted to us by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Shala Prabhupada, for the benefit of myself and all. And I would like to welcome all of you and the internet viewers to the class today. Krishna swa dhamo bhakate dharma jnana dhibhi saha kalau nashta drisa mesa puranarko adono dita. This Bhagavad Puran is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode. Accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dark 
dense darkness of ignorance in this age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. So, we know Rake Krishna Mareke, Mare Krishna Rake Ke. That the one that Lord Krishna protects, no one can destroy. And the one that the Lord does not protect, no one can protect. Further in the Bhagavad Gita, it's also stated, Kontea Pratijanahi Me Name Bhakta Pranasyanti. Krishna says to Arjun, boldly declare to the world that my devotee never perishes. Pratijanahi Name Bhakta Pranasyanti. So some words are stated both in the Chaitanya Charitamrat and in the Bhagavad Gita, more in line with protection. Now, we know that every day, as devotees, we also pray to Lord Narsingadev. And when we are praying to Lord Narsingadev, we are ask, asking for Lord's protection. So, in every form and way, we are asking for the Lord's protection. In fact, Srila Prabhupada's instructions to us on Lord Narsingadev's prayers is that he said, now the Lord will protect you. So, Srila Prabhupada comments in the purport, he emphasizes that no one can protect a person who is not protected by the Supreme Lord. Srila Prabhupada continues to also state that we should seek the protection of the Lord for the human form of life is meant for seeking the protection of the Lord. So in the purport we have read today, Srila Prabhupada states about this protection and we know from the previous verses, especially the previous verse that was spoken in the class yesterday, it spoke about the effect of Kal or time. And, that the, and we know that there is no one in history of the world who has been able to conquer death. And that's why Srila Prabhupada in a very famous lecture says with his eyes, he actually opens up his eyes and says, assure us death for those who are not devotees. He also reiterates this point, assure us death. So, what is happening is with the passing of time, with the, with the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun, the duration of life as we know is reduced. But this doesn't affect a devotee, as we will continue to speak on. However, it does reduce the duration of life. So, Shri Prabhupada also mentions this, as I said earlier on, he mentions this, that it is very important that we use all our time, 100%, 100%, he says, engage in the service of the Lord. Because every moment lost cannot be regained. And we have a very famous statement or shloka by one of our Acharya, Srila Bilva Mangal Thakur, where he says, Mukti Swayam Mukilandanjali Sevatas Asman. If I am engaged in devotional service unto you, my dear Lord, <coughs> then very easily can I, can I perceive your presence everywhere. And as far as liberation is concerned, I think that liberation stands at my door, uh, at my door with folded hands wanting to serve me. So now look at, look at the way a devotee perceives death and how a devotee perceives eternal time, Kal. That mukti, liberation is standing with folded hands. And on the other side of the aisle, is the gross materialists. They fear death. Just the very notion of death is not something palatable. But for a devotee, he knows that this is inevitable. Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadi. Birth, death, old age and disease. Death being one of them. Is inevitable. So for a devotee, he is not 
concerned about this because he knows that Mukti is standing with folded hands at the door. So this is the exalted position that we are in. There is also a very, there is also the uh, Brahma Samhita uh, verse, Pantas to Koti Sata Sat where Lord Brahma in his prayers is saying, Pantas to Koti Satavatsara Sampragamyo. I worship Govinda, the primal Lord. Only the tip of his toe of whose lotus feet is is approached by the yogis who aspire after transcendental and betake themselves to pranayam by drilling the respiration or by the jnanis who try to find out the non-differentiated brahman by the process of elimination of the mundane extending over thousands of millions of years. This is a translation by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. But the main point here is that the toe of the tip of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of God that are only reached by the process of Gyan and by the process of Pranayam meditation. Only the top, the toe. The toe. And, and Bhakti Siddhanta Goswami in his purport states that through these processes which is called the ascending processes only the outskirts of the lotus feet of Krishna are achievable, not the lotus feet themselves. Only through bhakti yoga do we actually get the opportunity of actually enjoying the mellow of loving service. The other processes are just reaching the tip. So this is very important for us because it is through this process that we are able to be of very sober mind and be able to understand finer matters that we are meant to be understanding. In the morning we always sing Samsara Dava Nalalida Loga. Every morning we sing the first sloka is Samsara Dava Nalalida Loga. Tranaya Karunya Gana Ganatvam. So, samsara dava nalalida loga. What does it mean? That the spiritual master is releasing us from the pangs of material nature. And we know in the Bhagavad Gita, Bau nam janma nam ante, jnana van maam prabhatyate, vasudevam sarma itni samatma sudullaba. That after many births, and that who is actually knowledge surrenders unto me. Srila Prabhupada comments in his purports that surrender in the material world as we know is, is, is regarded as a sign of weakness. I have stated this in the past. However, surrender unto the Supreme Personality is a sign of strength. Strength in which respect? Because we have conquered our irresistible desires to keep on serving ourselves. And have surrendered to what? Surrendered to to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Guru Kripa by Bhakti Latabij. We have surrendered. So that is why surrender is actually regarded as a victory. Because we have been from time immemorial conditioned to serve in our senses. Now there is a lecture that Srila Prabhupada uh, speaks on the disappearance of his Guru Maharaj Bhakti Siddhant Goswami Maharaj. And in this lecture, I want you to listen very attentively what is Srila Prabhupada stating. He says, Sado wa jivo ma marowa. This is what this, the spiritual teacher Guru is instructing. He is instructing that for a king's son, the blessing he gives is Raja Putar Jiranjivi. That live forever. 
for a muni putar which means the son of a brahmana the instruction that the muni gives this is <coughs> majivo majivo do not leave for the devotee this is a very important instruction is jivo wa jivo wa maro wa which means either you live or you die as you like and then for a butcher the instruction is majivo na maro wa which means do not die or do not live how many of you have heard that uh, class of of bhakti siddhant swans so uh, what is it that the reason he gives this different instructions especially to the king's son is because a prince is enjoying sense enjoyment so because he's enjoying sense enjoyment <laughs> he's given the blessing that continue living because we know that after death what is going to ha happen life will be very hellish now for a muni putra who is under the guidance of a spiritual master the instruction that was given is do not leave why because shila pavpad in his lecture says that the that the brahmachari is so well trained that he can enter into the kingdom of god right away so because he can enter into the kingdom of god what's the point of living then the 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 instruction given for a devotee is either you live or you die it's the same that's why it is there is a very uh, important uh, important instruction to us that a guru never dies we have the vani and vapu association that while they are on this earth they guide us through their presence and when they leave their body they are guiding us through instruction so for a devotee death or living is the same now why does he say to the butcher majivo na marowa because <laughs> do not live or do not die because he is living in a condition that is so abom abominable imagine taking the lives every day cutting animals it's very abominable so his instruction is given to him do not live or do not die because he can he cannot live and neither can he die because if he dies he has to as you shall so so shall you reap so so as we, as we realized is for the devotee appearance and disappearance is the same and that's when the bhagavad gita says deino deino asmi yatha de kaumaram yovanam jara tata de antra patris tiras tatra namuyati that as the body soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age similarly at the time of death we accept new bodies now the general mass of people do not believe in the principle of reincarnation why because it defeats their very logic that i only have one life let me enjoy it and let me marry let me let me have the best of this i have only one life but if you ask them where did you get this notion from they cannot give you an authoritative answer it is a whimsical thing that oh i have one life so i want to enjoy it to the best so because of that i do not want to have any notion of karma as you shall sow as in the bible it says as you shall sow so shall you reap they don't want to look at reincarnation because they do not want to be accountable for what they are doing under the notion that i am loading over material nature but we know very well that human life is a life of accountability shila prabhu pad stated in his purpose also that human life is the only life that is actually held accountable for sins a tiger when it kills an antelope or a deer for food there is no sin incurred because it has been given that body it has been given that body so in other species of life the the question of sin does not come but it is a human life that the accountability comes so ignoring it does not really solve the situation so that's why we say atato brahm jigyasa that is very important for us to understand this higher truths so 
a devotee understands that he is under and we under, we understand that we are under the th- control of the three modes of material nature and that we are not the doers of these activities so we are e- even in better understanding raja vidyam raja guyam that's why we are getting this spiritual science this knowledge so when we are praying to lord nashinga i had mentioned that lord nashinga we pray you know the, if you see the picture of lord nashinga the lord nashinga has four hands as we all know because it's vishnu in two hands hands is the padma and the uh, we have the padma and we have the uh, yeah the sanka these two represent devotees shor prabhupad states and the gada and chakra are for the demons because the lord has only one business paritranaya sadhu nam in a sayak dustiktam dharma samstapanartha sambhavami yuge yuge in the bhagavad gita the lord says i come millennium after millennium to do what to protect my devotees and to annihilate the demons but when he annihilates the demons he is also liberating those demons so the lord's work is to protect us and our job is to seek protection so in the purport shila prabhupad is mentioning that human life is meant for us to understand that we need to take the protection or seek the protection of whom the supreme personality of god it because neither a son neither the state neither your children neither your parents no one can give you protection because they themselves are not protected and that's why when shila prabhupad was born he was given the name abey charan by his father also god mohan de and i know we have a bay also here yeah because fearless because you are fearless because you're under the protection of the supreme personality of god so we also know from the from the story or the history of um uh pralad maharaj that he was protected several times by the lord and when he was asked by lord when he was asked by lord nashinga for a boon Palan Maharaj asked that please forgive my father. And what did the Lord say? And I need to be corrected here that not only your father but is it 14 or 7 14 generations? Achitapur? Yes. Huh? Yeah. So it is different different. So but I know it is a lot of generations. I I don't know whether it's 14 or 21 but <laughs> it's at least a number of generations from both sides are liberated so we sit in here especially the young brahmacharis this is the best service you can offer to your parents because not only your parents but the lord assures generations on both sides at least 14 to 21 will be released from this cycle and our duty is this because why do we want to be very successful in life because we think by being very successful in life we can provide the necessities of life to who to our loved ones correct or wrong but we ourselves are under the clutches of material nature so how are we going to be able to provide it's only by the mercy and that's why we know that it requires endeavor from the part of the devotee and it requires mercy from the lord these two ingredients are required in order for us to be successful so when we endeavor the mercy is going to come from the lord i wanted to stop here on the purport because today is the appearance and disappearance of a lot of personalities <laughs> you know i thought it was one or two but the calendar is full and this coming week we have a lot of festivals starting with advaita chandra's appearance day we have <coughs> lord nityananda's appearance day coming we have ekadashi coming we have uh, is it also vaman dev's appearance day so va, uh, sorry vara yeah vara 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 appearance day so a lot of a lot of auspicious we are going into a very auspicious week but one of the things i wanted to state before i went to this is that it's a privilege for us to stay in this community we should actually take this very very seriously shila prabhupada says there's six process, six necessities in devotional life starting with enthusiasm and ending with association of devotees sadhu sanga sadhu sanga sarva siddhi hoy lava matra sadhu sanga sarva siddhi hoy a moments association with a pure devotee of the lord can do what can change everything 
So we are very privileged to be in this society. And we should actually really take advantage of this. I know this for a fact because yesterday I went for a short drive. 50 miles away is not that short. It took me three hours to come here. I was, I was, I was shocked how much traffic Los Angeles is. And then I realized how privileged we are that we just walk across and we can come and see the darshan of the Lord. And we just take this as a very cheap and granted thing. Imagine for those devotees who are actually driving and coming from far. What they have to go through. The other day, we went to pick up Tile, and that was the day before, and Shirak called me, because he told me, call the supplier. I said, what happened? He says, I am three hours away. I said, where are you? He says, I'm on 105. It is five miles per hour. I'm stuck, and the GPS is saying, I'm going to take so long. So we are very privileged to be in this society. Let us really take advantage of this. So today is also the appearance of Pundarik Vidya Nidhi. Now in the Gora Ganodes Deepika, it is described that he is the father of Shirmat Radha Rani in Krishna Leela. And because of that exalted position, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu treated him as a father. I'm just giving anecdotes because there are a lot of them, you know. And, <clears throat> and he was the spiritual master of Gadadhar Pandit. Now there are two very notable incidents in his life. <coughs> One was his slapping of the chicks by Jagannath, by Lord Jagannath himself. That's a pastime. And then there is also the incidents that Gadadhar Pandit, who became his disciple initially, misunderstood him as a man of dollars and shillings because of the opulent way he lived. But he was a sannyasi from within. So that was... These are some of, the, some, some of the information we get about Pundrika Vidyanidhi. And then it is also the appearance of Raghunandan Thakur. So the most important thing that I could get about Raghunandan Thakur is that when his father was a, was a, a doctor, but when his father was asked by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is Raghunandan, Raghunandan the, the father or is Raghunandan the son? That's a very important point. And his father said that Raghunandan is the father. The reason why? Because he was the spiritual teacher in the family. So that is a very important instruction. Yes. And also, there's a very important notion about this. He was given a very important instruction by his dad once to serve prasadam to the deity. Now he was a young child. So just see the mood. He was a young child, so he was told by his father, please serve the deities. Now he did not know that the deities just by glancing eat. So he was offering and he was waiting and the Lord will not eat, the Lord will not eat, the plate was still the same. So he was worried that his father is going to come and chastise him, that why did you not feed the Lord? So he started crying. But his mood of devotion was so high that the Lord physically came and ate the prasad. And that's why we say that the child is so in innocent. But what happened? Now the dad came and he asked for prasad. And the son said the Lord ate everything. So he could not believe it. So he said, offer again. And he hid, hid at the back and he, and, and he saw what happened again. The, the child offered a laddu to the Lord and the Lord only ate half of it. So he could see and from that he learned. So he actually also took him as his spiritual teacher. So this is something we should learn from the lives of great Acharyas. Then we have obviously Raghunath Das Goswami. Who is one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. But he is also the Prayojana Acharya. Why is he the Prayojana Acharya? Does anyone know what is apart from Archita Prabhu and senior Prabhupada disciples? Does anyone know why he is the Prayojana Acharya? Yes. As far as I understand, yeah, so exactly. He has he has so many qualities. But because 
he is the divine he is in the divine service of shrimati radharani in vrindavan so as we know that he came from a very wealthy family and what does what does um, raguna uh, what does raguna das goswami's life teaches he is actually regarded as the person of qualities of simplicity and renunciation because he renounced everything came from a very rich family but in his life also the sadhu sangha sadhu sangha is so important because when he was a young child he used to go to take the association of who hari das takur and it is actually stated by shila prabhupada he, he speaks about this that it was by the mercy of hari das takur that the bhakti lata bij was implanted in him and we know that in later life he was taken uh, 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 he took shelter of both rupa and sanatan goswami they took him as his younger as as their younger brother and then just like madam also prabhu said he used to give obeisances was it a million or 2 million to the devotees i don't i, I cannot remember the exact it's a million or 2 million he used to give obeisances to the deities now see a life of simplicity but he comes from a very aristocratic he was actually guarded by his parents so he could not run away but he still went to serve lord chaitanya so then we have vishnu priya devi dasi ah huh? sorry vishnu priya devi mata ji not dasi we are the das and dasis so the reason i came with that notion is there we we have to understand who is vishnu priya devi she is the second wife of lord chaitanya but shila prabhupan mentions that she is also the goddess of fortune but there is two very important significances i can find about vishnu priya one is that she had to bear the separation of lord chaitanya separation from the age of 16 because when lord chaitanya took sanyas at the age of 24 she was only 16 but now there's a very important conversation a very short conversation but very important conversation between her and chaitanya mahaprabhu because the night before chaitanya mahaprabhu was meant to take sanyas she asked chaitanya mahaprabhu is it true my lord that you are going to be accepting this and the lord gives lord chaitanya gives her a very important instruction does anyone know what was that instruction to vishnu priya he tells her something very important he says that the human form of life is to be with sadhus and to realize god not husband and anything else so she took that very seriously and that is why when lord chaitanya left she used to chant rounds and for every round she chanted she'll take one grain of rice so she will only cook and offer to lord chaitanya the number of rounds equivalent rice she had gathered So, she, so, so, Prabhupada states that she was actually uh, greater than a sannyasi because she left such an austere life. And then, obviously, there's the disappearance of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comes in the disciplic, disciplic succession from Narottam Das Thakur. He is regarded as the crest jewel of the Vaishnavas because of his pure devotion, scholarship. and realized perception of radha gokulananda's intimate conjugal pastimes uh he he resided at radha kund and vishwana chakravarti thakur has given us a lot of literature he has commented on a lot of commentaries of our six goswamis in fact there is a statement but i do not know if it's bona fide that's why i'm not stating it but i did read it that he was even regarded as an incarnation of rupa goswami but i do not know if that is completely bona fide but it is on iskon desire tree if you read for the the lives of all the great acharyas he is also regarded like that it's now 8:20 any comments any suggestions on the class today Shrimad Bhagavatam class ki